not afraid to let go uh. You decide if you're ever gonna let me know Yeah, suicide if you ever try to let go uh. I'm sad and know, yeah I'm sad and know, yeah Who am I? Someone not afraid to let go uh. You decide if you're ever gonna let me know Yeah, so Hey, what's up, guys? Now, before we get into this video Okay Close the door so no one else hears it before I make this video, I'm going to tell you guys a story. One day, <laughs> there was a guy who, who came to my job and he asked me if I wanted to be a Mason. He had like this weird symbol, the Mason symbol on his hat. And he came up to me and he's like, hey, you know, as a black man, you can get a lot of benefits joining this, this, uh, this organization. I said no. I heard that they had some to do with the Illuminati. I'm not sure or not, but that's just a story of mine. Like, he came out of no fucking where. I knew he had been, I knew he was gonna talk to me at one point, but I, I saw him like maybe five times a week for a span of six months, and he waited till that end of that six month to come up to me and ask me. After I had, because I worked in a, a retirement home in the cafe area. It was crazy, bro. And ever since, you know, I I realized that there's some sort of amount of influence. I guess they go after influential people. At that time, I wasn't a YouTuber. I wasn't doing anything, but maybe they knew beforehand. Maybe they knew I was going to get some views, get a channel, get some people watching. Like, maybe they knew something that I don't, you know what I'm saying? Maybe... They know, oh, this kid may, you know, be, because I was like one of those people, I'm one of those people who never quit, ever. I, I don't like to quit. I don't like to give up on anything. Even if I fail, I will keep failing until I get it right. And if I keep failing, I will take it to the grave with me. I won't go out. You know what I mean? So I don't know if they saw that in me and me combined with doing this. So I was doing this back then, but I wasn't like as big as I am now. I wasn't getting the views I am now. You know what I'm saying? I was getting like maybe no views. So I think this is cool. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and check out Illuminati's warning to Taylor Swift decoded. Now this is gonna be disturbing for some of you. I don't I don't want to make these videos and like make you guys feel uncomfortable. So let's go ahead and uh First off, I'm gonna say viewer discretion advised, and we're gonna watch the Illuminati's warning to Taylor Swift, delicate decoded. It's by Spike and TV. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and give me some to drink too, cause yeah. Spike in here with another eye-opening expose. In today's video, I will be exposing a truly different perspective behind Taylor Swift's brand new music video called Delicate. So let's get to it, because there's much more to this than meets the eye. Taylor Swift has achieved an overwhelming amount of fame at a very young age. She's beyond successful, beyond famous, and beyond talented. She's an inspiration to millions of young women around the globe. But does that all come with a heavy price tag? A burden that's too hard to bear? In her brand new single called Delicate, Taylor shows us a strange new shift of her identity. As we begin, here we clearly see the first scene of Taylor's music video begin 
by showing Taylor Swift in a sort of a trance while being surrounded by thousands of fans and reporters on the red carpet. Okay, so this can kind of give you an idea of their level of fame, right? They're they're so famous, it's not fun anymore. <laughs> like, it's like, they're so famous, they're so known, so it's not fun. You know, it's crazy because, like, with YouTube, I've kind of gotten a taste of this, but I am nowhere, not even close, not even even going i don't know if i'm ever going to get to that point if i do i probably will hate it because i already hate the amount of people i have now like on my channel bro like i don't get a lot of views and stuff sometimes but like when i get on my playstation network bro i get tons of messages when i get my instagram sometimes i get messages and i don't want to read them you know i get them on snapchat i get them in other places and it, it's it's resulted in me purging and blocking people from my social media man like it it sounds fun to oh have all those people but once you have them it's not fun anymore like it's it's really like I, I'm just gonna be honest like I love what making videos and seeing the feedback and commenting back to people but I don't like the whole people saying you're famous part about it or obsessing over you I I mean that that's cool if someone says oh you're an inspiration dude I really like your stuff what's up man or what's up yo you know if you're a girl or whatever but I, I don't really see the reason why you know what I'm saying like why you would scream and form and crowd to chase one person and that, that's where Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, Selena, Gal Selena Gomez, and then you got paparazzi. Like, their levels of fame is just, it's not fun anymore. I know, I swear, I, I, it looks like they have the saddest face when they go out in public knowing they can't actually go out in public and have a good time and just live life, you know? This is representing the all too familiar image of an MK Ultra glitch that we've grown so accustomed to seeing in the entertainment industry. As we continue, unexpectedly, we see an inconspicuous suited gentleman hand Taylor Swift a note, a coming warning from the Illuminati itself. This can be proven by the next scene, in which we see Taylor Swift walking through a hotel lobby with bodyguards or handlers that control her every move. Dude, they got handlers. It's crazy. Is your life at all normal? No, no, not at all. What's the most abnormal? The most abnormal thing about my life is having sort of crowds form everywhere you go. And just everywhere. So that starts happening and then you have to take security everywhere you go. All of a sudden you realize that you have not been alone, truly, for five years. In essence, it is allegedly suspected by many that Hollywood celebrities are constantly surrounded by a team of handlers that keep control of the said celebrity. The general consensus that conspiracists believe is that a powerful group of people brainwash celebrities and use them to further their occultist agenda. According to theorists, celebrities who have been mind controlled are prone to glitches when their brain starts to fight against the programming. Many believe that these malfunctions explain famous public breakdowns. Handlers are there to prevent breakdowns and to reprogram the celebrities at all costs. Moving forward, we see Taylor Swift represent the total control the Illuminati has over her through her handlers. Every step and every move she makes is being watched, representing her total entrapment in the entertainment industry. Sadly here, Taylor Swift realizes the note she received earlier is in fact a dire warning from the Illuminati. This point is further proven by Taylor taking heed to the warning, which allegedly states that without her full cooperation and allegiance, she will be gone from the music industry, invisible to all eyes.
Whoa. There are a plethora of reasons as to why Taylor Swift has received this warning from the Illuminati. One being her recent dispute with the Illuminati's most famous family and the consequences that ensued thereafter. When Kanye called Taylor that naughty word and famous, Taylor was none too happy about it. At the time of the song's release, a rep for Swift saying it had a misogynistic message and that the singer was never made aware of that lyric. Fast forward to last night, and now Kim Kardashian posting on Snapchat what appears to be a phone call between Kanye and Taylor talking about the song. The Keeping Up with the Kardashian star says she's speaking out now to defend her husband. Yeah, I'm just like speaking the truth. Like he called her, spoke to her. Swift firing back on Instagram, writing, I was never given the full story or played any part of the song. Going on to say, I would very much like... I, I, I tell people all the time, don't mess with the Kardashian family. Like... They are, I'm not saying they, this Illuminati shit is real or whatever, but they are, are really, I don't think people understand, they are really powerful in terms of, like, just because of the money and fame they have. I'm not saying don't be scared to stand up to them. I'm just saying know that they got some fucking money and can do some dumb shit, get some shit done. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, it's just, it's so sad that people worship people like the Kardashians. I'm not saying that they don't deserve what they have or they deserve to lose it all or whatever. I'm just saying for a woman that did that to herself and got it on camera and the whole world to see, I'm sorry. That's just not women's empowerment. You know, I'm sorry. You know, and a lot of people say, well, you're being a hypocrite. Because what about men? They, they feel themselves and this and that. Look, let's look at it like this, man. A woman and a man both shouldn't do any of that stuff. You should want to keep certain things about you private. The whole world doesn't need to see you suck your dick. <laughs> From this narrative, I'm, one that I have I'm, never. I'm sorry, like the whole world does not need to see you having sex, okay? And then on top of that, you get famous off of it, and now you're supposedly some model icon. You know what I'm saying? Nothing against her, you know? Hey, Kim Kardashian, I would love to do business with you and work with you, but like everyone's just gonna know you as that woman that fucking you know like that just how that's gonna be your label forever no matter how much amount of money or fame you have people are gonna know oh what started that was that you know like it's, it's just what it is you know now as far as people saying she's trying to be black and has a black husband I, I, I don't do identity politics we're talking about what she did you know <laughs> As we know, after the incident, her reputation in the industry has changed tremendously, along with her shift in her personality. This warning even goes as far as to say that Taylor will be at rock bottom if she does not take caution to the significance of the Illuminati's stance. This is shown through her performance at the subway station, where she is ignored by the masses, something that continuously happens to people they're trying to make it in the industry, but have no fame. Leading up to the final scene, we see Taylor Swift walking through the rain, heading into a bar. As she rereads the warning she received earlier from the Illuminati, she realizes the dire consequences of going against the secret society that rules the world. Fearful and anxious, Taylor Swift looks up at the crowd expecting to still be invisible, yet she's not. Everyone can see her, and she relaxes as she grasps the fact that it is truly just a warning. Just a warning from the Illuminati. What the fudge? Many people look past the spiritual darkness of the world around them. Many don't take it seriously. What but the there fudge? is, in fact, high-ranking people that choose to work within the shadows twisting and plotting everything around us, 
all major events encompassing the world. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? But what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. I'm not religious, so that quote does not help anyone, but <laughs> at least not me. But it is interesting to see that, you know, there is some sort of secret society that, I mean, do you really think you're going to make that? There's people who have billions and trillions of dollars at the top. Do you really think that celebrities are the top? They're not. Celebrities are not the top. And like... <sighs> It's just, it goes to show there's more than meets the eye to everything. Even this YouTube channel, you know, people may look at these silly videos and go, oh, you know, this is what he is. This is what, that's not true. There's always more than meets the eye. And I, I've made that clear, I think, throughout my Easter eggs and my intros and things like that. There's little things that I have not shown you guys yet, but I keep my life private. And that's not because I know how dangerous the internet is. Even if it's 400 subscribers, even if it's a thousand subscribers, and in my case, it's about to be 24,000. I know that keeping your privacy is very, you know, important because people are just people and people are curious and people like to get in other people's business and things like that so i have to keep everything private and i don't think people understand that my life my personal life my family and you know my girlfriend and i have to keep everything private okay people don't even know i have a girlfriend that's because i just want to live my fucking life will i ever put it in my videos i don't know and, and will I ever, you know, show any of my family, I don't think it's necessary. I'm not a fucking vlogger. At least not a some type of daily vlogger that shows his life. If I show my life, I'm not going to show you my family's life. What can I tell you? You know, so I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and peace out. Arlen.